Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. I'm Dan Lemmy, who co-host of our monthly show with Adam Pena, our administrative coordinator. And we try to bring you the services and, and uh, departments that are offered to us as county taxpayers and residents of Sheboygan County. And each month, we try to focus on one department. This month, we have Ann Wondergem, Director of Health and Human Services, with us. Good morning. And we're going to focus on Health and Human Services. Uh, we have 23 departments. We've just finished our budgets, and, and I've noticed that of the 23 <laughs> departments, Health and Human Services has our largest budget, 35, a little over 35 million. So you have a, a, a fairly large department, a lot of employees, and, and that's what we're going to focus on today. But as we start, Anne, why don't you give us a little background about yourself and your involvement with Sheboygan County? Great. Well, I've been with Sheboygan County approximately 20 years in a number of capacities. I started out at the Comprehensive Healthcare Center as their volunteer coordinator and um, activity coordinator. From there, I worked under contract with Sheboygan County with then the Social Services Department, and I did uh, grant writing and program planning for the county. And then in 1986, was hired on as a social work supervisor. From there, became the division manager of social services, and in June of this year, was hired as the director of the Health and Human Services Department. And the Health and Human Services Department, one of the things we tried to do in the last couple of years is have a mission statement, a vision statement for our different Correct. departments. Could you just fill us in a little bit about the mission and of, of the department and responsibilities of the Health and Human Services Department? I can do that. Um, our official mission statement, I should say, is to improve the life and self-sufficiency for Sheboygan County residents. What we unofficially say is we provide services to Sheboygan County residents womb to tomb. Um, basically because our services are there prenatally, as you and I had talked about earlier, but we also assist people um, after death in terms of with their burial costs and everything else in between. And maybe you could tell just a little bit about the department. Uh, I realize it's a large department, so you can't tell us who's all working in your department, but just a little bit about the number of employees, and, and I know it's, it's split up into divisions, just a little right. of the makeup of the department. I can do that, and I'll try to keep it brief for you, Dan, I promise. <laughs> and we do have other things to cover today. <laughs> we recently moved to five divisions within the department um, based on my recommendation um, to the full county board to better manage and provide those services. I'll try to do it alphabetically if I remember it that way. We do have the division on aging, and primarily they provide services to people who are elderly through transportation, uh, benefit advocacy services. We also have the meal sites throughout the county that are run by that division. And we provide support groups um, for individuals who are trying to care for people who are elderly or have a dementia, such as Alzheimer's. Um, I'm learning a lot more about that division. As I said, on December 13th, I'm going to take a ride on one of the handicare buses to see firsthand how the services are offered there. In our Division of Community Programs, oh, and I should mention Jim McCabe, uh, is our division manager of that division. So if anybody ever has any questions, that's who they should contact. Um, and they're located in the Annex Building, which is the former Baxter's Building, if anybody needs to know the location. Our Division of Community Programs is headed by Joan Ketterman, and she's a recent hire also when Brian Bushnell retired. They provide services to individuals who have developmental disabilities, uh, issues with alcohol or other drugs, and mental health. Um, Joan's been quite busy because we've been doing the IMD study with the health care centers and have made our recommendation to the board. So she's been working diligently on building community capacity in terms of services for people with mental health issues. Those services also include um, long-term support services uh, through the community options program, community integration program. Um, those services are located in the annex in terms of better coordinating services with the Division on Aging. Um, and provide uh, services to help people stay in the community in their own home if possible, but otherwise alternative living arrangements such as community-based residential facilities and adult family homes. So those services are located not only in the annex, but in our main building in terms of our outpatient clinic and our community support program. We also have Economic Support W2, and that's the most recent division that I referred to. And uh, Liz Malak is our current division manager for that division, and she started in September for us. Previously had been an economic support supervisor, so we're pleased with that. Our economic support W2 division is located in their job center um, location out on Wilgus Avenue. 
and they do not only the Wisconsin Works W-2 program in terms of employment and training, but determine eligibility for food stamps, medical assistance, and a number of other financial assistance programs to help low-income people. They're also responsible for child care certification and payments to help people afford child care to keep them employed. So again, going back to our self-sufficiency. We have public health, and right now is the flu season, so we strongly recommend that everyone get their flu shot. There's already three confirmed cases statewide, and Dale wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Dale Hippenstiel is our division manager for that program. Public health services are located in our main building on North A Street, but they also do outreach clinics in Plymouth and other areas of the county. Um, they do school nursing services, immunization, the Women, Infant, and Child WIC program. Um, they've been very busy with health screening, nutrition education, and took part uh, most recently with uh, the bioterrorism um, effects um, nationwide. And most recently we started um, the hotel restaurant inspection program. So that's some of their responsibilities. And last but not least is the Division of Social Services. And Marty Bonk, who replaced me as division manager back in July, uh, now has responsibility for all child protective services, which is all the child abuse and neglect, all juvenile justice services, which includes those um, youth who end up having problems in the community. Um, anything from serious crimes, um, to armed robbery, burglary, car theft, um, to such things as truancy. Um, which are a, a, a lesser offense, they're called a juvenile and need of protection or services type of offense. Um, they do anything from the initial assessment to determine whether or not we have jurisdiction, all the way to providing ongoing services for children and families, including incarceration at the juvenile correctional facility. Um, for boys, that's in Irma, Wisconsin, and for girls, that's at Southern Oaks. I just think you covered everything for our next show <laughs> next month. <we're> gonna, <laughs> uh, how, how many uh, employees approximately do you have in your department? If I was ever at full staff, we'd probably have about 206 uh, full-time equivalency employees. About 200. About 200, correct. And with all these services that you provide, how does a, a resident or somebody that feels they, they want to access these services, how would they do that? A number of ways. Uh, we do have one main number that a receptionist can direct you at least to the right place um, if you can give her some idea of what you're looking for. And that's 459-6400. Um, you can also walk in. So as I explained before, we have the three locations. And if you need services in terms of support uh, related to aging or a disability, the annex, which is the Baxter Building, or our main building on North 8th, or the Job Center. So I recommend if they really don't know, just call 459-6400. And I imagine some people have already figured out how to access those services. Absolutely. Um, Approximately how many residents are, are, are availing themselves of your services at the present time? I did a quick calculation based on our annual report because we don't have an overall information base and it's over 30,000 annually between everything we provide. That includes individuals who are adults, it includes children, um, it includes families. Um, Those aren't duplicate numbers? To the best of my knowledge they shouldn't be but there could be some again because we don't have a database that sorts it out by person. So 25 to 30 percent of the residents of Sheboygan County are, are clients of Health and Human Services? At one point or another, yes. Fairly significant. Very significant. That's probably why your department is the largest, Correct. largest budgeted department <laughs> in our in, in county government. And you had talked about that earlier, Dan, and our budget is over 35 million. But of that, we receive state revenue that is almost $24 million. Right. Um, and that comes not only from the state, but, but other areas. Our tax levy is just around $12 million right. for the department. I didn't mean to think That's that okay. you had a whole tax levy. <laughs> Even though you do have a large share yeah. of it. The other thing that I think people don't realize is because we determine eligibility for food stamps and medical assistance, um, individuals who are determined eligible receive um, what's now a card. It's not even food stamps anymore in terms of a stamp that you turn in or a medical assistance card. That generates $30 million worth of revenue for the county annually just in terms of medical assistance going into individuals who would see their community health care provider, money going into the health care centers or private nursing homes. And that's homes. not money that's directly in your budget? That's not in our budget, but it's revenue that's brought into the county. 
You mentioned earlier uh, in the public health area that you have uh, this new program for uh, restaurant and hotel inspections. Right. Could you just describe, seeing it is a new service or new program, if you could describe that a little bit? Well, I even went out with the uh, restaurant inspector during the county fair time just to see what happened. But um, in talking to Dale and, and Bruce Cress, who is our restaurant inspector, since June of this year, they've already completed 284 inspections. And that includes restaurants, pools, um, camps, vending machines, and also temporary services. Um, the Hmong Festival, the Hispanic Fest, Brat Days, all those require an inspection also. The real key when I've talked to Bruce is education. Uh, we're not there to cite um, festivals or to cite restaurants, that type of thing. We want to work with them. The real key that I found out at the county fair is hand washing. Um, so many people fail to realize that you need to wash your hands on a frequent basis and probably the biggest violation is not having a sink close enough to where you have your food preparation area that people have adequate access to the hand washing facilities. Um, he's also done some training sessions and continues to do that in terms of temporary event people coming in to get a couple hours worth of training and we try to do that in group work. Um, but the response has been very, very positive to that program. And prior to this program there, there wasn't a lot of inspections being done or on a regular basis? The number of inspections done by the state was significantly less than what we're able to provide and the key component that was missing was that educational component. Um, so we're seeing a real improvement. The other nice thing is when a new restaurant is opening up, um, they're working with Bruce. So when they're designing the building, they can review the construction plans. It makes a big difference. We can prevent some problems from occurring right up front. So hopefully as we, as we go to the restaurants and, and the eating establishments throughout the county, we should feel a little more comfortable that we're... That, that Definitely more operation. comfortable, right. that at least there are inspections going on. One of the other things that... Uh, again relating to the same uh, health department that we've seen in the news a lot lately since um, since the terrorist attacks and and the problem with anthrax uh, what is your department's involvement with that locally okay one of the key things i want to point out is many times they say call your public health department if you have a suspicious package you really need to contact your law enforcement agency first and we coordinate with law enforcement in terms of if they determine that it's a legitimate threat um, we will work closely with them in terms of contacting the state departments so that we can have the appropriate testing done. Um, we had a very active role even prior to September 11th in terms of some tabletop exercise planning for bioterrorism and public health. Definitely any health hazard that would come about, um, even if it's not through a bioterrorism, would be something that we become involved in. Doing an assessment, um, a good example is a foodborne outbreak. Uh, we have public health staff that would interview people, um, work with the testing, um, do follow-up and assess and try to locate the cause of that. Um, so our role is more um, looking at the health aspects, whether it's bioterrorism or anything else, and working closely with our local law enforcement and hazmat team. So if there's an initial concern on an item or, or something in, in that regard, the first call should be to law enforcement. Correct. And then, and then they can. Right. If they just with you. have a, a question regarding, you know, what are the symptoms, we would be able to provide information regarding that. But if it's actually a letter or package that came, law enforcement is a person's first step. Okay. Thank you. And maybe in a more general term now, you could just um, tell us about some of the challenges that you and your department face. I'd like to tell you money because it's always money, and it is, and that is a key issue, but it's, it's something that um, we've worked diligently to look at, not division by division, but as an overall department, um, and we're, we're trying to do that. Our concern right now is the economy is on a decline, and of course, whenever that occurs, there's a greater need for our service. I was talking to Emily Adamovich, who uh, works in public health yesterday, and they've seen an increase in uh, people coming in to seek services in terms of immunizations and um, the WIC program, the Women, Infant, and Children. And we see that throughout the department whenever we have that. And of course, that's the time when money is least available. Um, we also um, really have a problem 
in the state providing mandates to the county, especially our department, and then not providing the funding. And one example that we've worked diligently with the state legislators on is the increase in correctional costs. It's going up 14% in the state budget over the biennium. That means about $100,000 annually cost increase to Sheboygan County. At the same time, they're giving us about seven to $10,000 to offset that $1,000. So that means we need to really make good decisions on what we cut back on because we can't ask for extra money. Um, so that's another one. Cultural competency. Um, we have a diverse population throughout Sheboygan County and recruiting and, and obtaining staff that can not only deal with language issues but take it within the context of a culture becomes very, very important for our department, especially when you're looking at child protective services issues. You need to put that in a cultural context. Um, real need for the county, and I'm not talking county government, but I'm talking agencies and companies and the private sector, to become involved in prevention efforts, whether it be through employee assistance programs or whatever. Those are the services that we always cut back on when financial times get tight. And whenever you cut back on that, you run the risk of two, three, five, ten years down the road seeing an increase in numbers because you're not able to do that. So we definitely try to work with the private sector in terms of let us work with you know, people who truly need government provided services and try to focus their efforts more on the prevention, early intervention. Um, lastly, uh, we're always looking for volunteers, um, for volunteers to supervise visits, drivers, foster parents. <coughs> Um, we, we really need the community support and community knowledge of what we do. I think there's a real lack of understanding out there. Well, the temperatures are quickly dropping and the holiday season's upon us. Mm -hmm. I'm living proof that the, the cold and flu season is also here. What are some of the special <coughs> programs that the, the department is administering this time of year? Okay. The key one I want to talk about, and it's been in the Sheboygan Press because it is a cooperative effort between the Sheboygan Press and Division on Aging, is Share the Spirit. And that particular program is uh, for people who are elderly or have developmental disabilities. They can be residing in the community or in a nursing home. And in November, Judy Linesey, who coordinates that program, gets letters out throughout the county. Um, people submit names along with ideas of what someone would like. And I called Judy yesterday and said, can you give me an example? And she said, oh, there's so many here that she's sorting through she couldn't. But it can be anything from a pair of slippers that someone requests um, all the way up to televisions I've seen. Sometimes it's a, a need for a person that they would like to get out to a beauty shop um, or have that paid for within the healthcare facility where petitions come in. Um, so we work closely with them in matching that. Um, and the other nice thing about it is you don't need to actually pick a person and say you will do that for them, we can take a monetary contribution and then when we have enough money, we can actually do that on behalf of whoever does that donation and purchase that. Although that program is primarily uh, a Christmas seasonal program, um, there have been times, especially during the summer when it becomes very, very hot, that we have elderly people in need of air conditioning and Judy has been able to um, purchase that when it, there is a real medical need for that person to have it. Um, last year it was about $7,000 that was raised for that program and truly shows how Sheboygan County residents do support that um, and we appreciate their efforts also. And there's also a number of other programs. Could you touch on a couple of other? You're right. Christmas is upon us. Um, we um, run uh, through our volunteer services person, Pat Priggy, um, along with the help of Sue Kufus and Sandy Wagner, we accept donations. There are certain people that for some reason truly want to give to families our department serves and want to make sure that's where it goes. We have um, organizations, um, we have individuals, families who actually donate food, toys, clothing. Um, and then what we do is the workers can come up and select um, a limited amount so that uh, if they have a family with five children who's part of our system, it might be one or two toys for each of the children or a toy and a piece of clothing. And then we also try to do the food baskets. Um, we had 37 food baskets that were distributed at Thanksgiving. And right now we only have um, two baskets donated for Christmas, so that's going to be a definite need. Um, and those are all done through local groups, the JCs, Ebenezer, Ebenezer Church, uh, one of the local um, bargaining groups, uh, 2427. And then Pat lives out in the Hunter Glen subdivision. And for some reason, they've taken us as their pet project. And uh, throughout the holiday season, they do little 
rounds in the uh, subdivision and come up with donations for our families. So um, we've been very, very thankful for that. Um, if anybody is interested, and I have to look down to get the phone number correctly, Pat Priggy can be contacted at 459-4047. And if you're willing to donate or become involved in any of our volunteer efforts, Pat is the person to contact. Now, she only does volunteer work part-time. She does social work the other part of the time as part of our um, budget um, conservator or conserving our budget efforts, but she'd be more than willing to work um, with any group that would be interested in doing that. Outstanding. Why don't you repeat that number? Okay. Pat's number again, 459-4047. And with the cold weather, what other programs become paramount this time of year? You know, Adam, you and I talked about this yesterday. I'm going to look at my notes because they change the terms for our program so often that I want to make sure I do this correctly. Um, through the Economic Support Unit, we have the Wisconsin Home Energy Assistance Program. And that is a program to help low-income people with their energy costs. The uh, program starts in October of every year, runs through May. And um, <clears throat> when you get your um, energy bill, you'll usually see a little line item on there and, and that little kind of couple cents that goes every month off your energy bill goes to fund this program. Um, statewide, what happened is last year the number of people needing that assistance increased more than they had anticipated. So they have the same amount of money available this year, and I just found out this morning a little additional money came from the feds, fortunately. Last year, the average grant given to a household was $472, and that's a one-time. It's not monthly. It's just a one-time payment. This year, they're projecting the average to be $372, um, so it's about a $100 reduction. Uh, this is just people who are elderly who are on fixed incomes as well as families. Um, the nice feature of that program is when people come in and they're determined to be eligible, if their energy bill seems high for the type of home or uh, apartment, what we take a look at is referring them to partners in terms of an energy assessment and working on um, are they eligible for some home improvements to assist with energy conservation. If anybody out there is interested in that program, I have a phone number along for that one also. And they would call the Job Center directly and we send out an application. In many cases, they may not even need to come in. In some cases, they will need to come in. To call to get an application, you call 208-5946. And I'll do that one more time. 208-5946. We're covering some important programs for this time of the year. One of the things folks have heard about, and I know you've encouraged me to do, is get my flu shot. Absolutely. Is the department geared up for flu shots? And if so, where do people go? Okay. For county employees, you come to the public health department on third floor, and we will make sure you get the square needle, Adam. We've already decided that Appreciate when you that. finally get in. And with I, your thought, I thought the nurse was waiting in the wings here to, to administer it. Certainly. That's about it. Uh, we had talked about that, but because Adam is showing the signs of having a cold, it's not good for him to get that until he's gotten over those symptoms. But um, it's painless. I had mine the other day, and it went quite well. Um, anybody else would uh, go to one of the flu sites. Um, the home health care agencies are running those throughout the county. If we were doing that, we would charge the same rate as they're charging. So they are much more accessible to the general public. Uh, for people that are in a higher risk condition, public health is also recommending they get the pneumonia shot. And they gave me the medical term, but just go with pneumonia shot. That's what people should get. Um, it is important, again, there at least are three cases statewide. Um, I'm not the medical expert, but the nurses said that uh, the strain this year is pretty serious, and uh, it's a good idea to get that flu shot. Um, the papers have been publishing that schedule, um, and if you really need to know one of the dates or times, you can call um, that 459-6400 number and um, ask for public health, and they can even give you the schedule over the phone. Now, thus far, our viewers have gotten a lot of information. One of the, lar the largest county department, approximately 200 staff, We've only touched on a handful of the programs. There's so much going on. Uh, touching 25, 30 percent of the constituents in Sheboygan County on an annual basis. How can people get involved to help the department to reach out and help their fellow neighbor? I remember giving a presentation about a year ago at this time. And I said one of the things is all of us come in contact with children um, through our own families, through neighbors, through our volunteer work. The key to me is children need a mentor, a positive role model. 
Um, it's easy to identify at-risk children. I think any one of us see it. Uh, when my children were younger, it was easy to spot those children coming to visit that there were some behaviors that indicated that they, they needed something. Um, so the key you can do in your own personal life out there is mentor a child that you believe could use some support. Um, do that on your own time. In terms of our actual department, volunteer drivers, we need volunteers to supervise visits, um, foster parents, adult family home providers. And if anybody is interested in any of that, uh, we have staff available to talk to you about what that means. Maybe you are in a community group and you would like one of our staff to come and present uh, more information about a specific as aspect of our, our department and we'd be happy to do that also. Outstanding, Anne. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Anne, you've been with the county for 20 years? Yes, I have. You've been director for, it's almost six months now. Correct. It's almost your six month anniversary. Maybe with a couple minutes that we have left, you could just uh, fill us in on, on some of the goals that you have for the future and some of the things you'd like to accomplish in the department. Getting my house decorated for Christmas would be nice, Dan, but I know that's not what <laughs> no, you're asking. No, no. <laughs> um, there are many, many things going on in terms of the department. The, the real positive aspect that I have found is the energy and enthusiasm of the staff. Um, based on our budget experience, um, I have challenged them to participate in a strategic planning process beginning in February so we can better prepare for next year's budget process. Um, looking at how we can better coordinate services within our own department and also with community agencies. Um, after nine years, we are finally going to be implementing WSACWIS, the Wisconsin Statewide Child Welfare Information System, and Marty Bonk has definitely been challenged with that, and um, I've been working with him on that. As you're aware, we're working closely with the health care centers on uh, the IMD designation and building capacity to um, serve people in a different way, and we'll coordinate that until the relocation of comprehensive residents to the Rocky Knoll Center. Um, and one last thing that I want to do while you're both here is we received um, these as a donation. We have 200 copies. It's Christmas favorites, non-alcoholic drinks, and it's compliments of our department and Encompass. Encompass paid for the printing. We have these available um, at our job center location at our department. And I have a copy for each of you Thank in you. terms of preparing for the holiday season. Bless you. And it's nice to know that this was not done with. That's correct. It Taxpayers was Taxpayers funding. A good example of private uh, public sector partnership. And that's what we really are trying to work towards. Um, and as one of my primary goals, um, we've done that uh, in social services over the years with Friendship <coughs> House, Harside, Shelter Care, and Land, um, some of our group care facilities for children. And in fact, uh, Steve Hailing from Friendship House, when we were working on the budget, um, submitted his original budget, and they went back to review it and found that they could save some money and called me up and he said, Ann, you can take, I can't remember, it was like $5,000 that we won't need. We've been able to do some rearranging. So we do try to work with people in the community in terms of how we can best manage the money. Great. Well, thank you, Ann. Thank um, you both. We, we crammed a lot of information into this half hour, but uh, I think it's, it's beneficial and, and good for the community to know what your department's doing. Next month, uh, we're running out of departments. We've been doing this show for almost two years now. We're running out of departments, but next month we're going to have Terry Burke, our family court commissioner, with us, and he's going to explain a little bit about um, the, the work that he does in that department and, and the intake court and those types of things. So, so next month we look forward to Terry Burke, and, and we thank our viewers for, for listening.